Hey, it's Chris. If you watched all the way to the end of my six inch MacBook Pro review and you heard me talking about the problem that I was having with my computer, my brand new expensive computer, you might've been wondering what happened with that? Did Chris take it back? Did he talk to support? Is he getting a replacement? So this is sort of an update to let you guys know where it stands. So in this video, I just wanna follow up, tell you about the model that I have, how I use it, and the issues that I've been having. I also wanna talk about my Apple support experience, both on the phone, in the email, in the store, and then I wanna talk about what is going to happen with this computer, and then I wanna wrap up with, do I regret this purchase? Let me first of all just start off by describing some of the issues that I've had with this computer. And I'll keep it really brief in case you already heard me describe it before, but it basically seems like there's three things going on. Number one, I've had some restart issues. So whenever my computer went to sleep, it would kind of freeze or glitch and it wouldn't really wake back up. The screen would be black and the keyboard would be lit up. Like it was on, but I had to hold down my power button for five seconds to actually shut it off and then turn it back on. That was one issue. And that's something that would happen kind of randomly. I didn't know when it was gonna happen, just sort of happened when it fell asleep. And I should say that I think the restarts were happening whether it was booted into Windows with Bootcamp or with the Mac. If it went to sleep, it seemed to have a kernel panic. A second issue that I've been having, which I think was related to that first issue, is that I couldn't turn my Mac back on right away. So in other words, if it had its glitch, if it had its freeze up, and it was doing its thing where it wouldn't uh, just restart properly, then I would try to turn it back on, and it wouldn't turn back on. I'd press the button like 5, 10, 15, sometimes like 20 times before finally the Mac logo, the Apple logo would appear, and I would be back in business. The third issue which I seem to be having is that the thing would just restart itself. So I'd be doing something, the fans would spin up, and turn off the whole computer, just right in the middle of a task. Now that was happening a lot less, and so those are the three issues, all very annoying, very frustrating for this expensive, over $5,000 that I spent computer. So let me talk about what I use this computer for and the programs that are running, the accessories that are plugged in as I've been having these issues. I bought this to be a video editing beast, and it is. It's basically fully maxed out, except I got four terabytes of storage instead of eight. So at any given time, I probably have a suite of creative apps open. That includes Final Cut Pro for video stuff, maybe Photoshop, maybe Lightroom. I might have Compressor open. And then on top of that, I have my productivity stack of apps. So Trello, maybe my email, and then a browser. A lot of the time I end up using Chrome, even though I'd prefer to use Safari, but Google owns YouTube and Google owns Chrome. And for some reason, there are certain things when I go to upload a video that I can't get to work or do in any other browser, even Chromium browsers like Brave, unless I'm using just the straight up Chrome. So I do end up just using Chrome for most of my browsing. So let me take this opportunity to just tell you a little bit about my most recent Apple support experiences in relation to this device. So the first call, I called somebody up, just the regular support line, kind of described what was going on, and the first thing that they said was you need to reset your VRAM and a couple other things. And so we did that, and nothing really happened. Nothing changed, nothing got better. So the way that that call ended was that I was sent an email with a couple of help articles, things to try on my own. Of course, things didn't continue to work out very well for me. I still had the restarting issues, couldn't turn it back on very easily. So what I did was I sent an email to the guy that I bought this from, which is the local Apple store, the business team there, the business manager, and I was like, I think I got a lemon. And he was like, we need to schedule you to come in to the Genius Bar and get this looked at. Brought it in, talked to a genius, very friendly, very awesome, very knowledgeable. They ran some hardware tests while I went out and got some lunch, some vegetarian lunch. And then I came back and they were like, there's nothing wrong with the hardware. Basically, it's either a Catalina issue or an accessories issue. So you're gonna need to wait for Catalina to get updated or you're gonna have to just kind of go one by one through your accessories and see what might be causing this. While I was there though, he looked through the logs and he saw several kernel panics, things that were not going right with my computer. So then what I did was bring it back and over the next week still kind of had some issues, been talking back and forth with that Apple store, with the business team, and I'm sort of further describing my issues and basically they're like, well, you need to bring it back in and we'll check it out one more time. And if there's something really wrong with it, then we're gonna send it back. Which again, this is frustrating. And again, I'm glad I live by an Apple store, but an hour there, an hour back, that's two hours out of the day, a couple hours to wait again. It really bombs a whole day's worth of productivity by the time it's all said and done. 
So I wasn't really looking forward to that. And on top of that, if they did have to replace it, this is a custom order. It wasn't off the shelf. So it was gonna be one and a half to two weeks before I could get my computer back and get back to work. So really, that's not something I wanted to do. So this very day, the day that I'm shooting this video, I called Apple support one more time, talked to somebody out in Florida who really had no idea. They were starting from scratch. They didn't bother to look up any of the notes on this case or anything. They were yawning. It was early. What they did was escalate me to a senior Mac advisor. And this person was awesome. They were on top of everything. They knew everything to do and check. Uh, we ran some more tests. And basically what we concluded is that this is probably an issue with a third party whether it's a third-party app or a third-party accessory. Well, I'm really only using one third-party accessory right now. That's my 49-inch LG Super Ultra Wide Monitor. So we looked at some stuff. We looked at, should we do a fresh install of Catalina? Because maybe that would do something if Catalina was in fact corrupted. We looked at the programs that were starting up when my computer launched, and there was two. There was M Installer, which is for my Final Cut programs, and there was LG's uh, on-screen control software which helps me divide up the screen really easily. Now, this senior Mac advisor did let me know that if the computer ever gets too hot, then it will go ahead and shut itself down. And so I think the ex times that I experienced it, the fans like flaring up and then the computer shutting off, that was when I was doing something really, really intensive, maybe like Final Cut or maybe even gaming on the Windows side of things. If you saw that video, then you know it was pushing the Mac to the limit. I think the cause of this experience was probably down to buying a brand new product as soon as it was available and being one of the guinea pigs that gets to work out all of the little glitches and stuff. So think about it. I'm using this external LG monitor, for instance, and Apple comes out with Catalina with this new computer and they update it. There's been a couple updates since it came out and that fixed a few things. I did watch it actively fix a few things. But LG also is, you know, as the maker of the monitor, they need to come out and update their software and all the different apps that I use and the plugins for stuff, the makers of that, those products, they need to go through and update their stuff to get it working and optimized for Catalina as well. I think there's a lesson here, and I should know this more than anybody, but if you buy a new product, you might wanna wait a little bit. A lot of people are always like, don't buy the first version, wait for the second version to come out. But that's honestly not practical. You know, when you need something, you need it. And I didn't wanna buy the old, MacBook Pro, right? Just it had some issues. It wasn't it wasn't exciting enough. I wanted this next thing that was gonna be announced and it was this and it was announced right when I needed it. So I pulled the trigger. But if you do buy something when it's brand new, as soon as it's available, then I think you need to build in a little bit of being the guinea pig and using it before all the different third party vendors have had a chance to update everything to make sure that it's working perfectly. And this is sort of the perfect storm. There was Catalina that was new and there was this new hardware. Now I wanna conclude this video by answering two questions. Number one, did I get a lemon? Number two, do I regret this purchase? Because I know there are people out there wondering that. Okay, let me just stop this video right here. I gotta give you an update already. I was shooting this video and I had already recorded everything I was gonna say about it, and I was gonna conclude with the fact that I thought this is definitely not a lemon. Everyone I've talked to has convinced me that it's absolutely not a hardware issue. It has something to do with third-party something, other third-party apps or third-party uh, accessories, something. It's not the computer itself. I was gonna say that. I was gonna get on here and say it. But as I was shooting, because the tech on the phone earlier walked me through a bunch of stuff, and just have me convinced that it's probably not the computer. I, I have to come on here and say, I just don't know what it is right now. Maybe it's the computer. I don't know, maybe it's third party stuff, maybe it's not. All the little tweaks that we did, me and the support guy this morning, didn't stop this from happening again. While I was shooting this video, I was getting some B-roll, that's the footage that goes over the A-roll, which is the talking head, the blah, blah, blah. While I was shooting that, I shut the computer, it was disconnected from my monitor, shut it, and I was gonna get some footage of it, and I did, and when I opened it back up, the screen was black. The keyboard was on, the touch bar was on, I could control the caps lock key, uh, but it's like the screen wouldn't turn back on. So, it did it again! And so, man, I don't know what to think. I really don't. I will tell you this though, I'm frustrated. 
I am frustrated with it. And now it's like, I feel like I need to get back to him and be like, I don't know. Maybe we need to replace it. I just don't know. I still will tell you this. I, it does not in any way sound like it's a widespread thing. Like it's happening to a bunch of, you know, 16 inch MacBook Pros out there and you need to be cautious, need to be aware you don't buy one. I don't think that's the situation at all from different people and sources that I've been talking to. It does still seem like the issue is my issue in terms of it's either either my computer, the hardware, maybe, possibly, I don't know, or my apps or my accessories somehow, which in other words would be third party stuff. At some point it's either gonna get fixed or replaced and the replacement will work or it won't or whatever. And I'll give you guys another update. But still, I mean, the Mac is the Mac and this is the Mac that I would want. So I want to figure out how to get this to work for me and be happy with it. I'm very happy with it 97% of the time, but it's that 3% when it does something that messes everything up that just drives me insane. It makes me upset. It does make me mad because it was expensive. I want it to work. Okay, update over, still frustrated, still everything isn't working 100%, still on the trail of tracking down what the problem is, gonna get back to the Apple store and see what happens. So stay tuned, but there's still a few things left to say in the regular video that I think still apply. So back to it. Now, as for the second question, do I regret buying this? Well, no, I don't. Let me say this, and this is a really important thing, I think for me, this is personal, I would never say, what I do is right for you or try to convince you that my way is the best way. But for me, I wouldn't be happy with something like a fully maxed out Dell laptop. Even the XPS, like the top of the line performance thing. I'm really happy in the Apple ecosystem for the main bulk of my job, I use Final Cut and I love it. I don't wanna use Adobe Premiere or anything like that or an alternative. Uh, so the Apple ecosystem, when it's all working right, it works so good. Being able to take video and photos because I forgot a shot and I need to illustrate it and just do it on my iPhone real quick and then airdrop it over or take a screenshot, drop that screenshot, just drag it from the corner into Final Cut. There's all these just amazing things that make me very happy with the workflow. And I wouldn't be happy even if there was some crazy hardware thing and I had to get my Mac sent off and repaired or replaced, I wouldn't be happy with something else. It wouldn't plug into my ecosystem and make me happy two weeks from now. Well, you know what I mean? So I'm very happy. I don't regret it in any way, shape or form. And I honestly do recommend it to you. If you're looking for it, for this specific model, don't let my experience or what I said in the first video throw you off. The only other computer that I could really see myself wanting to use instead of this is maybe the Mac Pro, which as you know, I didn't get. I opted for this instead because for the price, uh, that one starts at 6,000 without a monitor, without anything else. For the price, I felt like I got more computer by spending just over 5,000 on the 16 inch MacBook Pro than I would have just getting the base level Mac Pro anyways. But if I could afford getting, you know, the 20 or 30, 40, $50,000 version, of course I would rather have that. But that's not a discussion for this video. All right, so that's it for this video. And if you're not already, make sure to follow me um, at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K, -K, on Instagram, on Twitter. I would love for you to go and check out our podcast, The Daily Tech After Party. So excited to get back into that after the holidays. And just because this video is over doesn't mean we have to quit hanging out. If you want an extra shot of Chris and of Apple and of this topic in particular, the MacBook Pro and potential issues that it may or may not have, we're gonna talk more about that in the next video. It's linked up right here. I'll link it up down below. It's the Q&A. Instead of attaching it to every video like I've been doing at the end of last year, it's gonna be its own thing. It's gonna live on the Clips channel. So check it out and I'll see you over there later.